Hello and welcome to the Warcraft the Audio Commentary. This is game three from what has been a fairly entertaining best of three series so far for WEL. I'm joined by my co-caster BDO. Hello. Hey, I have to sneeze. Okay, that's that's great. Uh, I while just, you, I, I didn't think I would get that out because I had to sneeze. Right? It's just. Okay, I was right. like, I thought I would sneeze during that, so I was like, I have to sneeze, but I didn't. So it just sounded awkward because I had to sneeze. Anyway, uh, thank you for inviting me to cast this with you. Always fun we to have you. We don't do it enough. We don't we do it enough. We really don't. But it's hard. It's hard to collaborate and you know tight schedules, etc. But let's go ahead and introduce our players really quick. We do have HLA spawning in as the blue one dead in the upper left part of the map. This map is actually Crystal Kingdoms, and we're gonna go ahead and see that Cash is gonna be spawning in as the yellow orc down in the bottom right. Now the last map was actually I've I've done forgot the name again. Um, it was um. <laughs> Well, there's it'll be in the description for that video anyway. It doesn't matter. So, yeah, I can't yeah. remember. It was that one map. It was that fight. one map with the campaign and the stuff. Yeah. And the, and, and the, the, the furball tracker. Anyway, so HLA is actually going with a standard Fiends build. Again, the late Fiends, late hero. Pretty much the, the build where you want to go ahead and creep out. Try to get to level 3 if you can, and Cash is going with a pretty standard grunt build as well. Generally going to be seen as a 2 grunt tech. You know, creep up a little bit, maybe harass a little bit. He's got options. He can really pick whatever he wants right there. Yep, uh, because of that burrow, like you said, he's probably going to go for a 2 grunt tech. Pretty standard on both sides. Uh, yeah, this map is Crystal Kingdom. Yes. We have a lot of weird creeps. We were debating before if the Shadow Strike is there for the Arachnids. May it might be. I don't, I, it might be. It might not be. It's really annoying. I've, I've seen this map a few times, and I I don't remember seeing it on there. But it's you know I've I've I haven't actually played it, so I, it's hard to remember just from the replays. Yeah, and that peon is going to get some scouting. He's going to see that okay, this is a pretty standard fiend's build, and that fiend's going to come out. And I wonder if he's going to kill off that peon. He's definitely going to chase it, and uh, he might have to suicide it to creeps. Either way, yeah, it's he's... a dead peon. Definitely like... a dead peon. And honestly, if, if if HLA is able to pick that up, then he'll get 25 experience on that Death Knight when he spawns, which is always really good. And it looks like maybe both of these players haven't been familiar with this map either. Now, these are maps that have been um, <laughs> anywhere but here. <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice chat. Um, now, these maps have actually been out for, for a while now, I believe. Several months, if not, you know, over a year or so um, in the Chinese yeah. scene. There's a lot of like Chinese uh, leagues that are just introducing more new maps, not new, but just introducing new to the map pool, if you will. Well, yeah, a lot of a lot of well, these maps have been, you know, this is the WL, it's sponsored by Yumiko, so I'm really not surprised to see these these Chinese maps in the pool. And these maps are actually, I think, really well done. A lot of the times, I think you have to practice them to really get you know the full benefit from them. But I think if players give them a chance, they'll find that these maps they do have a nice dynamics to them. And of course, it's always nice to be playing on a different you know background or scenario or scenery or whatever than the usual typical norm yeah i agree i agree change is sometimes good well yeah and i mean and people generally like change i think you know when you have like maps like ancient isles or, i mean really warcraft these had a fair amount of maps not like starcraft 1 or starcraft 2 where they have like complete rehauls of the entire map pools like every season or something yeah but, but i mean of course you know i i'm trying to recall back like to if anybody remembers weg like years back and they had that old i can't remember the names of the maps like maelstrom perhaps um you know ancient isles twisted meadows secret valley all kinds of new maps that were just brought in and people and you know great maps that we like today you know so yeah the norm maps now that we would say oh you know that's just a normal map we're <laughs> trying also... to get this around very nice round by cash nice we're actually spell. completely not talking about this game at all um but yeah yeah absolutely about the maps and these are maps that i think we're going to end up seeing as standard and part of our map pools i think they pretty much are by now actually so it's a little surprising but then again yeah. hla and cash are not really the most active players you know hla just coming back recently uh really and from what i know at least and cash obviously not playing a whole whole lot anyway so Yep, and HLA is p did pick up that level 2 off that grunt, which was the real first piece of action. Kashi coming in, stealing that one trapper, picking up... Nope, sorry, the DK did pick up the Ring of Protection, and now it's starting to pick up this game. I think both players are just realizing that this map is really long. Uh, Kashi figuring out where the hell is he supposed to creep, and uh, yeah, now starting to put on the pressure, and there's no DK here. Now coming back, so the Blade Master is going to put on some damage. He's actually going to get dusted, and he's going to have to run away at really low HP, but um, overall... I'm not sure if that was that a good trade. 
Well, I mean, you know, you're, you're, that's what you're doing. You're trying to buy time. You're trying to sit there and you're trying to, you know, if you can steal some experience, it's always great. But mainly you're just trying to slow down the creeping of this undead player. And that's and that's generally what you want to do when they're going with the standard fiend build. I mean, it depends on what you want to do. I mean, sometimes you can see the level three played master creeps, for example, which, you know, don't really harass as much. But, you know, when you do what Cash is doing, your goal is to slow down the creeping, keep the undead at lower levels, and, you know, be very aggressive when your shadow hunter comes out, which I'm assuming... No. Is it Torn Chieftain? Torn Chieftain. Okay. Well, who knows? I mean, there are a lot of ways to play, and Cash does like to mix it up every game we've seen so far doing a different strategy. So, uh, you know, maybe there's a little bit of mind games in there. Doesn't want to be too predictable. Yeah, and Cash uh, creeping out that giant elephant, if you will, <laughs> picking up a Wand of Lightning Shield. What is that actually called? Um, what? Which one? That giant elephant. It's called something. Uh... It's called a mammoth, a nice touch. Oh, mammoth! There you go. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what it is? It's a mammoth. Yeah. It's a mammoth. It's a, it's a very old creature. It is. It's almost like a minotaur. Just like <laughs> they are what extinct at this point? Yeah, unfortunately. I think so. There's not Cave any men. coming around Kentucky, is there? Um, no. Well, maybe there might be a couple. I mean, honestly, we've got big forests. And, well, we used to have. Big, they all got deforested and cut down. It's not so good. Ah, uh, poor minotaurs. Poor minotaurs. Minotaurs. Uh, that. Oh, well, mammoths. All mammoths. Of, all mammoths. They're ancient creatures. <laughs> all of them. And Minotaur is also extinct at this point, I believe. Little it is, yeah, definitely. Very it unfortunate. At all. Oh, it totally did. Um, I think it, they, they went extinct in the Great Dragon Wars of the Middle Ages. Okay. Cash is putting down two beast cherries and mass raiders. Are we going to see... I mean, we could see hit and runs on this map. We absolutely could. Uh, There's a lot of ways to sneak out... Or there's really one big way to sneak out. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of room, though, as you can see. And, I mean, it, it does give you a couple of paths as well. So it's definitely one of those situations where hidden runs, absolutely viable. And he may just decide he doesn't really want to deal with that Frost Armor stuff anymore. He's been having a lot of struggle with it in the past two games. And you don't really have to deal with that if you're playing hit and run style. So Yeah, and uh, Cash's harassment trying to keep that DK on a low level not really prevailing. HLA has had the, uh, the ability to creep out the map pretty easily. Pretty successfully um, with the the map is just really long. I think it's hard for an orc player to harass because there's just so many places you go. Uh, and the orc player is going to intercept this lich. He might just right click it a bit or not. Okay, that's cool too. He does scout that the the DK has an illusion, checking out the orc's army. And now the undead player is in the base, and we're probably gonna have to see Cash coming back to defend this. Well, yeah, Cash definitely. Well, he could. Act, well, yeah, that is a good point because. If he tries to run all the way to the other side of the map, he's never going to make it there in time. And I think I think that's part of what he wants to do, though, is not really being taking any kind of engagements. But he will be taking this engagement. Going to get a nice war stomp off, in fact. Going to hit three of those fiends. Of course, it's only level one, so it's not really going to do a whole lot of damage. We will see that one fiend going down. And, of course, this cryptine, I'm sorry, this uh, frost armor just doing a lot of work right now. Yeah, the Torn Chieftain also getting targeted down. And... Overall, this fight's going very, very well for Kashi, although with those coils and the frost armor, I think it's slowly going to dwindle down into HLA's favor, so long as he doesn't lose all these fiends. He's going to lose another fiend while trying to coil another one. Really nice multitask cre uh, attacking by Kashi, not just focusing one unit, focusing two at a time. So if HLA coils, obviously one of them is going to die, which is really nice. Yeah, and I mean, HLA is though, is sitting on a lot of mana. He has that potion of mana as well. He's got that pendant of energy on that death knight. He came in that fight full mana. You know, it's definitely and Cash a... gonna make a Kodo Beast, and he might eat a fiend right away, seeing as it's right outside the base. He's gonna probably try to take one down. He's gonna oh, eat, no, yeah. he eats one for sure. And Cash actually getting the really good benefit of these fights right now. Frost Armor obviously doing really, really well, and those ensnared fiends are not going anywhere. So they're definitely gonna. Wow, a nice coil going down on that fiend, and the Blade Master wasn't targeting it. He's definitely going to try to take it down now. Is it going to be able to run away because of Frost Armor? This is really a nice engagement by HLA with great focusing by Cash. He's going to have to TP out. HLA is going to have to TP out, yeah. yeah but I mean, still, nicely done by Cash. Oh, going to pick up another Fiend. Phenomenal micro coming in from Cash. And he's got that was a nice lightning shield right there. Almost kidding that Crypt Fiend that was going to inevitably end up sitting right beside that Lich when they did teleport out. Unfortunately, didn't quite grab it. So that's a little unfortunate for Cash. But... A really good engagement, nonetheless, and I'm kind of surprised Cash was able to win that fight and force back uh, the TP out of HLA because, you know, he was sitting there, again, versus a full mana Death Knight. Look how much mana the Death Knight currently still has. He did just pop that potion of mana, but still, 
He's got a lot of mana. You know, he's, he was having yeah. a lot of coils thrown out. It was just really, really good focus from Cash, like you said, on the two different units at the same time. And that's what allowed him to win the fight. I mean, really good. Of course, that Code of Beast also helped a lot. Really nice timing for HLA coming to Creepjack at this Goblin Merchant. Uh, I don't know. That was obviously really smart to come in and scout that. And yeah, Cash is going to back out. He's not going to be able to finish that without getting at least afraid of an undead coming in and taking, you know, some of the kills. Yeah, absolutely. And he's, you know, it's it's also one of those things too. You don't want to be creeping when you get, you know, when you're fighting. It's just always a pain. Yeah, it's just unfortunate. You don't want to be cut in between a rock and a hard place. Is he an orb? Oh, it's here. Here comes that oh, orb. Oh, never mind. It was because of the Kodo Beast had a fiend. That's how he knew where the the army was. Oh yeah, yeah. That's a good point. I totally forgot. I was like, how did he know that he was over there? <laughs> it's like uh, <laughs> he saw the army. <laughs> Really noob casting on my part today, but that's okay. Kashi transitioning into Wyverns. Yes, yeah, you generally want to see about four Windriders with this kind of army composition right here that Cash has. It, the Windriders, once you get about four of them, they can actually do a lot of focus fire and DPS uh, damage, really. And what you basically, if you have your War Stomp, you can actually prevent a lot of those the webs for a while because you know you, you run the Torn Chieftain and he gets a big War Stomp on all the fiends. You, you know, you ensnare one or two, you focus it down with your Windriders. And it, it's a very shock and awe styles tactic. Yeah, does the endurance aura boost? And that is Shadow Strike yeah, from the creep. Oh, yeah, so it does have it. And uh, when you have Frost Nova and you attack something, if you have endurance aura, do you walk a bit faster? Even though you um, are slowed? Or does the endurance. Yeah, it, yeah, it doesn't. And Frost Nova doesn't slow you down to a specified thing, it slows you down by a percent, so. Oh, okay. We're not really a percent, it does but. Get that percent down a bit. It's going to be a huge engagement. Both of the Liberans are going to get. Uh, webbed and one is gonna get targeted down. Is it gonna die? Yeah, it's definitely gonna yeah. die. But Cash, uh, really getting, I actually is in a kind of a bad position as the undead player is backing out, and he's gonna have to back out himself. Yeah, that was a really nice pick off by HLA. Yeah, absolutely. And we see a boneyard coming down in HLA space. He's gonna try to get frost rooms out. I like this a lot. He's gonna have a really strong, damaged uh, composition. He's gonna have a lot of damage coming in. Uh, especially with a low wyvern count, and it's going to have to force uh, Cash, sorry, to go into anti-air, which could be in the form of bats um, or raiders. Or... So yeah, um, that we just see Cash creeping out the goblin merchant. He's trying to get uh, some experience. He's obviously picked up an hilarious flute of accuracy, which is going to give ranged units uh, more attack. We see with that that endurance or in the true shot or coming on those on those wyvern and it's it's providing a lot of damage with the war drums ability from that code is making those wyvern plus 12 attack which is really really good and HLA creeping at the bottom of the map in the bottom left it's going to creep out this giant furbog elder shaman and i wonder what item it's going to drop it's going to drop a talisman of the wild which is a great little item gonna allow him to summon fur bogs of his own during the fight which is just going to provide more damage and right now kashi's decided to go for the fountain of health He's gonna try to take down this blue drake and right now we see both people both players start just creeping out the map we might see hla come to intercept this and if he does can he get the the benefit of it yeah kashi's gonna have to back out and i mean that's really unfortunate he's gonna take a lot of damage on that koto beast he might actually take a he's gonna take a lot more than than necessary oh it might it's still getting targeted yeah, it's being slowed, so yeah, it's not looking good. Yeah, that's really unfortunate. He's going to be down a lot, and he's going to have to use a salve on that Kodo Beast. And you can't really take a fight with a low Kodo Beast, because that's just so much damage coming from that War Drums ability. And if he loses it, then he can't take a fight at all. Keep in mind, his army is just so small in comparison mm -hmm. to the Undeads. I mean, he doesn't have much from the Undead player, but these Fiends with Web are going to be so good. And that Frost Room is also like almost 70% out. Which is going to be amazing. So he really needs to focus on getting more units into the mix or he's going to be in trouble. Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree with you. That Orb of Lightning on that Torn Chieftain, I wonder if he's going to pass it faster as he gets more over into the fight. I assume he will. Furball doing some work uh, with the Creeping as well. And uh, Cash is scouting this. He knows where HLA is. I wonder if he's going to try to take a fight or if he's going to try to avoid the army. Uh, there's a shade on the Orc army that, that uh, Cash does not know about. So little does he know that uh, the it, HLA does have scouting on him as well, and that frost room is out, and I think HLA is going to try to take a fight at this point. It's got a huge composition of, of of units that can do terrible damage to the orc orc player, so I wonder 
Uh, if he's going to try to take a fight, yeah, he's definitely going to try to take a fight. He smells blood up here. He smells blood, and he's going to try to go for it. With that shade on the army, he's going to know where he is, and he's going to pick him off. He's going to come in here while the orc is creeping. Definitely going to pick off that Kodo. Oh! Uh, wow, and he steals the creep! What a nice That move. was so nice. That was so nice. And now uh, he's got the orc player on the run. That Kodo is getting sniped by the second coil. Uh, used by the Death Knight, and now the Death Knight and the uh, Undead Army is just going to steal this creep. Yeah, just go for the mad experience. I really like it. He's going to throw down that third four bog, and all, the Orc player has no chance to take a fight here. Even Cash knows that. He's got to back out, and Cash is not looking good right now. The Orc uh, Undead player, not only does he have a really strong he has map control, he has 4-3 heroes, they're going to do a lot of nuking damage. He's got invuln pots on his DK, he's got a uh, health stone on that lich so his heroes are looking pretty beefy and with that nuke yeah he's gonna have to try to focus down that frost worm for cash but at the same time he's losing so many units that one wyvern getting uh targeted down and right now cash is is doing not bad a big big war storm coming down going to definitely take down that fiend and uh cash is gonna have to rely on taking out that frost worm is he gonna be able to can hla get another coil on it it would save him for a bit more he gets a coil on it and right now hla is taking down almost all of these units for Cash. Cash having to pull that invuln down, finally takes down that Frost Worm. Another Grunt going down, but he, uh, Cash just doesn't have the damage output um, needed to even fight these two heroes. That Torn Chieftain's getting targeted. He's got a push of invulnerability. He's going to have to pop it. Is he going to be able to pop it? Is it on cooldown? Oh, no, he goes. He pops it, definitely. And that Lich is going to have to get targeted down. Uh, wow, the Playmaster falls down. Oh, Whoa, good GG. game. Good game. Really nice fight by HLA. What a, what and a game. that is the end of the best of three series that was really really nice um <laughs> amazing that was really nice game hla definitely taking advantage of map control uh really nice micros and fights despite almost getting steamrolled early game against cash in what seemed to give cash uh, an advantage or at least hold but i guess when you pump out uh that i guess that army composition for the orc just didn't work out well, it almost it almost did, but you know, HLA just outplayed him, and he had better creeping throughout the game. He had better map control. He did he did a lot better with a lot of different little things. When you think about all of that together, it ends up having a really large impact on the game in the way that it was actually played out at the end. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, and once that undead player has a frost room, the orc player has to take it down. Mm -hmm. So all that focus is going to a frost room. Meanwhile, the rest of the army with those fur bogs are just taking out your units one by one by one. And even by the time he he killed that frost room, he had no more units to actually take down the army itself. Yeah, that's that is that's so cool. that's a bit of it. But yeah, that's yeah. the best of three series. That was, I believe, in the round of eight. So more games uh, from that tournament. We might catch some more. We might not. But overall, really nice games coming out of that tournament, and I really respect uh, the people, the organizers that worked uh, to getting that happening, because I love more games, man. Yeah, big shout out to those guys. Especially involvement with uh, like a Chinese league, for example, involving foreigners to play. I think it's great. Foreigners being obviously the Europeans, the the Americans, and the Koreans. Uh, it's really nice to get that involvement. It's yeah, it's always nice to see like lots of people because there's. It's really great to have all the different, I guess, little little mini scenes or the sections or whatever that you know uh, of Warcraft that you come together and be able to play in the same tournament. Especially when you think about how it, they really are kind of segregated, but. That's, you know, that's, I guess that's for a different story. Um, I, you know, that's pretty much all we have for today, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the cast. And do you have any final words, BD, before we actually go ahead and leave? Uh, yeah, you can catch me uh, casting with Pierre every Saturday. We try to do the Zotech Cup as much as we uh, possibly can. There are usually updates on this YouTube channel. Um, but if not, you can always check on Saturdays, basically all day. You can go to uh, twitch.tv slash PureB. That is the channel we usually cast at. I'm usually casting during the day randomly at twitch.tv slash b2tv. So those will be in the description as well. Uh, you can catch me doing that. I'm going to try to get more double, uh, dual commentaries with Pierre. I like doing it. Don't do it enough. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, people like to see it. So if you guys like this, give us comments. I love comments and feedback. Um, and that's that. So that's, that's my take. All right, well, thanks for watching, everyone, and guess what? We'll see you guys next time.